back. You're watching Overdrive and it's now time for On The Line, our segment where we get up close and personal with CEOs who tell us about their plans for the year ahead while getting down and dirty. But here's On The Line with a twist. Take a look. Well, as you can see, I'm nowhere near an assembly line. Now, I wanted to get Siddharth Lal, CEO and Managing Director of Royal Enfield, on the line, but we were told he's unavailable. We were told he's out riding the new Continental GT somewhere in the remote interiors of the country. Well, we've tracked him down in this beautiful land of Goa, as it turns out. Siddharth, welcome to this unusual episode of On the Line. 49 years ago, the first Continental GT was launched. This time around, again, you've revived it, but once again at a time where there's nothing else like it in the market. So are you satisfied? Isn't that a great thing that you know, we've got a bike where there's nothing like that in the market and, and that's our entire purpose, to try and create machines, to try and create a segment really which is new and which is interesting and which is, which, whose time is ready and, and, and we believe cafe racing is, is, is time is absolutely ready in India and in the world. Okay. Um, when I was speaking to Dr. Padmanabhan a few years ago, he had said that when the Classic 500 was launched, maybe it was just launched a little bit before its time. It didn't give them enough time to iron out all the possible problems. This time around, you've taken more time, more than I would have personally liked. But are you being extra cautious this time around? Well, uh, there's nothing as extra cautious really. This is this motorcycle has been put together painstakingly over the last four years. We worked tremendously. The engine platform, of course, is borrowed. So in the sense, it's the it's the unit construction engine from uh, from 2008 where we developed it, and we've developed it further. We made it lighter. We made it. We've bored it out to 535 cc. We've remapped the UC, so it's it's more responsive really. But the rest of the bike is ground up, brand new, and we've we've developed it with the best names in the world but on the other hand we have tested this for tens of thousands of miles and kilometers across the world in in beautiful tracks like Castlecombe in the UK which are historical tracks we've 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 done it on the roads in UK and US in Europe and and in India so we've put in a lot of miles in development testing we made sure that it works as it's supposed to and that it does what it promises to do and and within that we've invested tremendously in 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 state of the art uh, toolings and dies from Italy, from Japan, from, from Taiwan, all these countries just to make sure that the bike you get here is absolutely repeatable every single time we make it. Okay. So Siddharth, why don't we in the true tradition of cafe racing race to the next shack? Mind you, uh, rumor has it that Siddharth is the next Johnny Britton, so I'm going to try <laughs> and stay behind him as much as I, as, as I can. Well, ready few, huh? Let's go. Absolutely. For those of you who are fans of Royal Enfield motorcycles, it is important that you know who Siddharth Lal is. Well, not just because he's CEO, he's the guy you need to be grateful to for resuscitating the Royal Enfield brand in 2000 from a consigned state of inevitable doom to a fledging company that now not only sells cult motorcycles to India, but exports them to established motorcycle markets like the US and the UK as well. And today, I was going to talk pure product with him only helps that he has a master's degree in automotive engineering but it didn't help me that he's a good rider too as he beat me to our first pit stop you have a lot of international partners you have Harris engineering you have Zenofia you also have a lot of foreign parts uh, suppliers like uh, you have the Brembo brakes and like you mentioned the Pirelli sport demon tires uh, what is the investment plan been like which is contrary to what you've had in the past well, we don't break out individual investment numbers, but let's just say that we've had four years of development on this bike and a lot of the development has been on the chassis part. So the engine was also worked on a lot. We had we made it lighter so that there's less inertia, it revs higher. We've increased the capacity to 535cc. We've remapped the ECU to make it even more responsive. So all that was done, but... Um, but that was the only carryover part as such. Everything else was ground up new. So the chassis, uh, Steve Harris was an old hand at, at designing and probably the best person in the world to design such frames. You know, he designed us a beautiful twin cradle feather bed frame and, and it, that is the starting point of the rest of the bike because that's where it all comes together. We've had um, Zenofia working with us on the entire design, on the entire concept of the bike and, and, and taking cues from the 1960s and from the Continental GT of 1965, which was the first production cafe racer in, in, in India, in the world and so with all of that we've actually been able to 
put together a, a machine which has got brilliant parts, but actually it's much more than a sum of its parts. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's eventually the objective was to make it great fun to ride, and we believe we've been able to accomplish that. Okay, so that let's now stop racing each other and let's try and race the sun to our next destination. Yeah, I mean, I'm looking forward to getting there, and it's a, it's a lovely destination, La Plage. It's the best place to see a sunset in Goa. See you there. Siddharth was not only responsible for the turnaround at Royal Enfield, he also helped Aisha commercial vehicles to the path to growth in a time where commercial vehicles giants were struggling. But today was about this beautiful cafe racer to come out of the Oregadam facility in Chennai, which revives memories from the 60s rocker culture and cafe hopping in the UK. Well, we'd had enough of cafe racing and it was time to call it a day and had the perfect setting for our exit stage ride. So Siddharth will come to the end of our ride and uh, as you can see you probably had enough of the red colour so it's a whole new colour. It's a well kept secret, nobody's seen the yellow colour before the actual launch when you, when you surprised all of us. Yeah of course I mean you know we had to leave something for you guys and, and, and I've been working on this for a while now because these are the evocative colors of motorcycling in our opinion, they're the fun colors and so we've had the red out, you know, in, in, the, in, in the auto expos before and of course in the, in the UK launch but this is now the new color and it's a fun color but it's only going to be available April onwards so it's a few more months away. Okay, well Siddha, let me tell you that this red color looks good but that yellow is just outright spectacular. Well. I believe you've been riding in Goa since Ridomania this year and uh, this year once again it was a resounding success. Now all of us keep thinking that you know every year as new manufacturers come in, loyalties get divided. This, this whole cult that Royal Enfield has would dampen down a bit but that's just not happening, it just keeps getting better. Well thanks for that, I mean <clears throat> we believe so and we believe we are only at the start of something which is really really big. And while we've been creating something we believe special in India, which is which is a kind of motorcycling which is different. It's of course it's bigger, more evocative bikes, but it's but it's also it's also not very uh, it's it's more democratic in some way. I mean, anyone who really wants it can 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 get one of our bikes. So it's not intimidating in in any fashion. These are bikes which you know you can you can you can do anything with really. They're, they're pieces of canvas in our opinion. So. So with that kind of motorcycling, what we found is that is that people warm up to it a lot, and with the type of culture we've created, the rides, the events, all of that, that gets people onto bikes, and that gets them excited, that gets them to meet people, and and more people actually uh, come into the fold, and it's 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 going down to smaller markets, into in, and it's it's very interesting now. But now our intention is to spread this what we've created in India across the world. One of the purposes of On The Line is obviously to engage how, how our CEO is actually involved with the product that he makes and this ride most certainly has shown us that side of you and, and your love for not just motorcycling and, and motorcycling in general but also this idea and philosophy and lifestyle that you're trying to, uh, to promote. So thank you for your time. It's been an absolute pleasure riding with you as well. Thanks Amshir. Great riding with you. Well, that was Siddharth Lal of Aisha Motors riding a Royal Enfield Continental GT. Aisha Motors has been an outperformer in the stock market. In fact, UBS says it's their top pick in the auto sector. On that note, it is time for us to head into a break. But when we return, we answer your queries on auto.